This is Andy Purawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm delighted to be joined by Bob Arum over Zoom. Bob, first and foremost, how are you? Good, very good, very good. I mean, uh, uh, it's a beautiful day here in Las Vegas. Uh, we finally got some great fall weather, so I'm feeling uh, really spry today, and I can't wait like most boxing fans. Uh, for uh, for Saturday, where we'll see, I think, a fight that'll go down in history. Bob, you mentioned it there, you know, we're finally here. It's fight week. Everybody's been buzzing and looking forward to this fight for a long time now. The chance to see an undisputed title holder at lightweight between their bout between Vasyl Lomachenko and Teofimo Lopez. And for obviously those watching over in the UK, they can see it on the Fight TV app as well. Um, but Bob, how does it feel to know we are only a matter of days away from seeing this fight? Well, it's hard to believe, you know. I remember Lopez when he was just a pup and shooting his mouth off and backing up everything that he was saying in the ring. Uh, and uh, I remember the night that he won the championships. Loma, Loma was there uh, and we got him into the ring. And, you know, for us in top rank, it's been a privilege promoting uh, Vasil Lomachenko. Uh, for me, he's one of the great fighters uh, that not only have I promoted, but one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen. So I'm looking forward to this. I mean, can the brash young guy uh, with the dynamite punch and a lot of hidden skills can he unlock the puzzle uh, that is Vasil Lomachenko? Uh, I don't know. Can he? Uh, it's hard to go against the master, but uh, maybe uh, Lopez can do it. Bob, in your entire history of working in the sport, where does this fight rank for you? Well, you know, it hasn't gotten the same type of hoopla that fights uh, that I've done, Hagler fights and Leonard fights and Oscar De La Hoya fights and Mayweather fights have gotten because of the pandemic. So that's been bad. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, it for me is like a puzzle. I mean, I turned it over uh, all the time in my mind as how can Lopez beat him? Can he beat him? Uh, is Lomachenko too great a puzzle for any fighter in his weight division to handle? Uh, you know, I guess I had the same questions uh, uh, when uh, uh, Oscar fought uh, uh, Trinidad or when uh, Mayweather fought Corrales. Uh, those are great fights with great fighters. Uh, and the thing that makes them great is you really don't know for sure how they're going to end up. Bob, you mentioned you know, that the fist fight didn't necessarily get the, the same type of recognition some of those past fights did, certainly because of the pandemic. Given what is going on in the world at the minute, and there's a lot of uncertainty building around the sport with regards to the financial side of it. How difficult was it to get this over the line and how pleased are you that we are, like I say, just a matter of days away from it now? Well, fortunately, boxing has in ESPN a great supporter. Uh, ESPN realized uh, this past summer how important boxing was when all other sports, because of the pandemic, was shut, we were able to uh, present boxing twice a week on ESPN uh, from the bubble, where everybody was COVID tested and COVID free. Uh, and uh, uh, it was a lifeline for ESPN uh, because they had live sports. Uh, which they were able to show uh, to their subscribers. Uh, realizing that when it came time 
uh, to do uh, the Lomachenko Lopez fight. Uh, we played around with maybe doing it on pay per view. And then ESPN came to us and said, no, no, uh, you know, in these hard times, uh, let's make it available to everybody, uh, the 100 million people uh, that uh, can get uh, ESPN. And uh, anyone who tunes in, tunes in for no cost and can watch this great event. And they told us, and they were right, that doing that would really help the sport. And I agree, because now fans can see what it surely will be the best fight of the year, or the most anticipated for real fight fans, and not have to go into their pockets and spend money to watch the event. Just the way they don't go into their pockets and spend money to watch the Super Bowl. You mentioned the support that ESPN have provided you, Bob, with regards to getting this fight on. Um, over here on the UK, obviously, it's going to be on Fight TV. Uh, for those who tune in, nine ninety nine, a brilliant price, in my opinion, for what is a legacy fight for Vasyl Lomachenko and a huge opportunity for Teofimo Lopez to kind of have the world at his feet if he's successful. But with that kind of taken in note as well, how much of a surprise is it that one of the leading UK broadcasters haven't picked up this fight, in your opinion? Not surprising at all, because, I mean, sad to say, but the broadcasters in the UK look at boxing as a money-spinning sport, and that means that every half-assed fight goes on pay-per-view uh, so that it can soak the boxing fans. That doesn't build the sport. And I want to commend uh, Frank Warren for taking that terrific heavyweight match, uh, Du Bois and uh, uh, Joe Joyce, and putting it uh, on BT uh, without uh, additional cost to BT subscribers. Bob, as we mentioned, this obviously could be a, a, a legacy fight for Vasyl Lomachenko. I say legacy fight, he already has a legacy, but a chance to cement it further. And Teofimo, the young ball coming through. For the victor, though, what does this do for their career, Bob? Well, with, uh, with Loma, uh, it continues his legacy and will leave him with one of the great legacies, you know, in the next few years when he departs from the sport as being such a great force, both in the amateur and professional ranks of boxing. And as far as Tiafimo, uh, people will give him credit, even if he doesn't win the fight, for the effort that he's going to make in the fight. And if he wins, we have a new superstar in the sport. Just to move forwards, Bob, um, so obviously some big heavyweight news I have to ask you about, which has come out over his past week. I see he's smiling, so <laughs> you know what I'm going to bring up now. Um, Tyson Fury and other members of kind of the team around him have, have said that the third fight with Deontay Wilder will no longer be happening uh, this year. Bob, can you just kind of clear up that entire situation for us and how the events unfolded to reach the point they have now? Well, under the contract uh, uh, that we had with the Wilder people, uh, the rematch had to be done uh, by a date in October. Actually, it was July, and then could be postponed and was postponed into October. When that wasn't realistic, the parties agreed on December 19th. Uh, and then uh, sports on a big level uh, became active in the United States. And uh, December 19th, there will be uh, five uh, college the conference championships, which are tremendous in the United States, plus two professional NFL games. That's equivalent, you know, in American football to your Premier League uh, big games. Uh, and so it was crazy to put on a fight on pay-per-view 
uh, in the United States against that lineup. And then when we looked around, uh, there were no dates available uh, in December. Uh, and so they gave us uh, both Fox and ESPN uh, a January, late January date and a late February date where we could do uh, the fight. And when we presented that to Tyson Fury, he said, look, I've been training every day. Uh, I've got to do a fight this year. Uh, if Wilder is not available, which he isn't for the fight, uh, then I'll do a fight in England. Uh, on, and I think Frank picked, Frank Warren picked December 5. Uh, and then I'll look forward uh, next spring uh, to a fight against Anthony Joshua, should Joshua beat Pula. Contractually, Bob, where does everything leave Deontay Wilder? So say if Tyson fights December 5th, he's successful, and then he looks towards next year. Does he have, to, does he have the right to be able to go in with Tyson Fury, or does he have to face Deontay Wilder? Is there any kind of clause in place which means Wilder can fight Fury soon? No, quite the contrary. If, if, if the fight uh, isn't made uh, by October 15th, which it wasn't, or, or December 19th, which the parties agreed to, Tyson Fury is free to fight anybody he wants. Uh, and next year can fight Joshua or Pule, whomever he wants. He does, he's not obligated contractually to fight well. Tyson, coming back, and he's mentioned, and you've said yourself, he wants to get back out in the UK in December. A lot of kind of a leading names have fights lined up, Bob. So who are you guys considering? Who, who's kind of, are you looking at to get Tyson back in the ring with? Well, it has to be uh, a, a, a fighter rated in the top 15 of the WBC. And uh, we've examined the list. And there are maybe five fighters that would be available and would make good fights. Maybe it's as little as three. And hopefully in the, this week, we'll be able to select uh, an opponent from the available fighters. Bob, we know Tyson's been very vocal about that Anthony Joshua fight. Have you held any further talks with AJ's promoters, with his management team at all? We're all set with that. It's a 50-50 deal. We'll iron out uh, details. Uh, let the two guys have their fights in December. Uh, uh, Tyson against whomever he fights December 5. Uh, Joshua against Pula on December 12th, they both win. Uh, we know pretty well where we're going with the fight. You know, I think within uh, three hours, we can uh, finalize uh, any details that are outstanding. It's not rocket science, particularly when you make a 50-50 deal. Bob, just a couple more questions from me before I leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. Um, news also coming out of these past couple of days. Jack Cattrall has agreed to step aside to allow Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez to contest an undisputed fight at £140. Talk to me about that one, Bob. How happy are you that Jack's obviously agreed to do it? And just what are we in store for with regards to that Taylor Ramirez fight? Well, Jack is a terrific fighter. We're going to arrange for him to have a fight, maybe even on that card. Uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, and then uh, to fight the winner within a short period of time. Both fighters have agreed to that. Uh, so it was a sensible thing to do. Uh, the public really wants to see these two kings fight each other. And then uh, Jack will cash in by fighting the winner. So that was, I think the prudent thing for everybody to do, there was great cooperation uh, on all sides. And so I'm grateful for that. When can we expect to see a Cattrall Ramirez fight take place, Bob? Who? 
when can we expect to see, sorry, not Cadrill, when can we expect to see uh, Josh Taylor versus Jose Ramirez um, face each other? Uh, the, the, within the first three months of next year. We're all hoping uh, that by that time we get a vaccine so we can do it for a big audience, whether that's in the UK or in the United States remains to be seen. Uh, but uh, it's a big major fight and we want to do it uh, with a lot of screaming spectators on either side of the Atlantic. And my final question, Bob, we saw uh, Navarrete win in very successful fashion and convincing fashion this past weekend. He called out Josh Warrington after the fight. Could we expect to see that one? We'll be making some moves and some phone calls uh, with Eddie Hearn and his team. Well, I will be talking to Eddie uh, about that. I didn't talk to him about that today because there were a lot of other issues. But I'm sure Eddie will realize the value of that fight. And uh, again, with if it makes sense with Navaretti and uh, Warrington to do it over in the UK, Navaretti is more than happy to go over there uh, to do what I think would be a nonstop action fight. Bob, I will leave you now to enjoy the rest of your day, as I say. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the week and, of course, fight night. It's going to be a great fight. Sunday morning in the UK. It's worth, worth staying up for. 100% Bob. I'll see you soon. Thank you.